BCIB, the Captain Bridge Conference. This is really, really a magical weekend. I always love conferences for years. My social life has been going from one conference to another conference to another conference to another conference. To another. And there are people who are dear friends of mine I only ever see at these events. And it's just fantastic to have so many of my friends all together in the same place at the same time. Now, today is going to be a jolly fun packed day. We do, finally, everybody, since, since you arrived yesterday at my tea time, people have been asking me what's the schedule. And I'm going to go over it for a because I didn't know. However, now the truth can be said, because we actually have a schedule purposely of which up here, and the first speaker will be on for about half an hour is my old friend and colleague Richard Freeman, who will be talking about mystery capital of the world. Because the important thing, as far as I see it, is that we don't just come too parochial. There is a distressing tendency, as I said last night, for people in the big cap community, big cap research community, to consider themselves as big cap researchers. First and foremost, we are Whereas I believe the big cat research is just a branch of cryptozoology. Cryptozoology is just a branch of zoology, which is just a branch of the natural sciences. That the whole thing has to be looked at holistically, which is why I'm so pleased we have Richard here today, because the big cat phenomenon is not just something which has happened in Britain in the last few years. There are mystery caps from all over the world. And that's what Richard's going to be talking about later on. After Richard, I am incredibly pleased and incredibly proud that we have managed to do Nigel Bryan here. Because I've been wanting to meet Nigel Bryan in something like 20 years now. I'm not sure where, why, as we lived in the, we've lived in the same county for those 20 years. Most of the time I lived in Exeter and he lived just on South, South Malton. I went to school near South Bolton, I have to say, but I still don't know why we never, we've never actually met. And it's funny, we actually met for the first time about 20 minutes ago. But Nigel will be on at 12. We've got an hour and a half for lunch. Now, for, for lunch, and if we have some time during the morning, I'm going to extemporize a coffee break or two. The coffee will be, coffee and tea will be down in the barn where we were last night. For those of you who worked here last night, you go down to the main end, you go down to the main hall, follow your nose, it's past the loos, and you just go out the door and meet in front of you will see a little uh, bridge going over half an enclosure. Just go over the office and there's a bed of tea and coffee and food. Uh, today I'm afraid the uh, convention people will be paying for paying for tea and coffee and stuff. We must be able to for you for free for last night. But the important thing about Tropicaria is that we are a zoo here, a, a real problem zoo. The idea of a zoo is to provide a haven for animals. My great hero, Gerald Dahl, turned the concept of a zoo around. And he made it that a zoo is somewhere that does real scientific work, real conservation work. And so I, I don't know about you guys, but I don't for any moment begrudge paying my tea, my coffee, my beans on toast. Because I know the money for that is going to projects like the Northern Hamilton Helmeted Tourist and Breeding Project. Here we've got the only breeding pair of these birds in Britain. And last year we produced 10 babies, which are now being sent off to start up new colonies in different zoos around the country. This is really fantastic. And this is a living, working, breathing zoo. And which, that's one of the reasons I'm so pleased that we can actually have the conference here. So, that will take you up to lunchtime. I am not going to bore you by going through what's going to happen all afternoon. However, I am still looking forward to the last act of the day, the Sarah Nash, because I still don't know. I've been trying to explain to you three, three different times what we'll the time is. Still sounds like something out of Star Trek. So, I want, I'm very much looking forward to that. But now, for about 20 minutes, I'm going to hand you over to Mr. Minter, because as you, most of you, I think, have been Minter, and last night he did a very interesting and highly entertaining uh, <coughs> workshop, an exercise, or whatever. Yeah, well, okay, he's not going to do, I have no idea what he's going to do, 
do, but I'm sure it's going to be just as interesting. That's over 20 minutes, Mr. Rick Thank you very much, Jonathan. Good morning, everybody. Nice to see you all. What I'd like us to do, what I suggest we do, is sort of get, uh, and, uh, get to know each other exercise for 20 minutes. And what I'd like everybody to do is to meet somebody and talk to them for five minutes that you don't know. So you might you forget to get out of your seat and find another seat. And in that five minutes, what I'd like you to do is introduce yourselves and say why you're interested in this topic and talk about what you would like to happen realistically in the next five years in this subject, what would be your sort of realistic sort of great thing to happen that would really please you about the cats in Britain? And I don't think we can say we're going to get all the evidence we need uh, to conclusively prove anything or whatever, but what's your realistic sort of aspiration for the next five years in this subject? And then we'll all get back together and we'll take some comments on that and then we'll do another little discussion point. So, First five minutes, meet somebody and talk about that, and then I'll ask you what you'll say. Okay, go for it. Must be somebody you don't know. Please meet somebody you don't know. We have one, one or two quick comments from your other chat person for this morning chat we were having earlier. I just wanted to comment on this question about the acceptance. I don't believe there could be very much more acceptance in general. Um, because of the primeval fear that humans have of things they don't understand. I think it would require a very big education program to develop that acceptance over time. But that is assuming there's a, uni there's some part, but there's a uniform view. But the, I, I, I don't feel, in my own work, there is a uniform view. I think some people, I, I think deep down there is that fear of a sort of predator going. Um, you know, for, uh, stalking our children, as it were. But I think a lot of people are recognising, in, in my, my work, I see a lot of people are recognising the benefits of predators, and that it, it is just um, very, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not good news for society and the world and in the environment to sort of just do away with predators and not yeah. care about them, yeah. just because they're fierce, awkward things that we just don't care and do away with. It's right, Brian. Say so, um, again, if we started with that, but you know, the risk of a sport. Yeah, there is a case that they think that we've actually got one of the most ecologically aware societies really doing right now. We're more concerned with the environment, it's, you know, it's, it's big for those politics. So perhaps in some ways, um, this is probably the best time to actually approach these type of subjects. Um, you know, rather than everybody being worried again. Yeah. Um, people are more aware of the need for them. Yeah, thanks, Brian. Yeah. Could I ask a quick question? Just, you might elaborate this later, but you touched on the possible benefits of reintroducing our links or other cats back into the, you know, the, um, the, the UK. What Could you possibly go over some of those benefits or all the possible pros and cons? I don't want to do that now. I think it's a very important topic that we ought, we ought to cover over the weekend. My next point is actually going to, to list some of, some other key topic points that we can discuss in, in, during the breaks and during tomorrow. Yeah. And that can come up. Come up. Yeah. One more point about what somebody said in your little chats of twos about what's your hopes for the next five years. I would like to ask two, well, two things. First of all, I'd like to, like to see the sort of getting together with the uh, people who are actually working in the field. I think it's very important that uh, in the way to find out what they are is certainly they not to accept that they are there and a lot of them won't accept it for various reasons. Yes. So more collaboration between us, you know, the likes of us and, and other sort of amateur investigators of big cats with sort of the official Yes, yeah, just people who are you know, spending a lot of their time, you know, they, they've obviously studied science and very well, but they, they won't accept until they get absolute proof. <coughs> and I think uh, it's up to the job of us to give them that. One more comment on that? People agree with that? People support that? Certainly I find that's yeah. my role. That, that, um, and a lot of the lot of the people you're referring to do sort of aware of plenty of anecdotal evidence as they would call it, but they 
they sort of shun it. They just say, I want to, I'm not going to contemplate the subject until you bring a dead body to my desk or whatever I have the ultimate forensic proof or whatever. Well, back to that, one of the reasons why I've been in the I found it a because I wanted to provide a forum for the amateur researchers. And these days, a lot of people smear the amateur researchers. But remember, Darwin, the names, mental, what all amateur researchers, the great founding fathers of modern zoology are amateurs. And I wanted to provide a forum for amateur researchers in all the different cryptozoological and allied studies to be able to meet and to actually, because we uh, now provide a sense we, we publish books, we make films, we need to legitimize the work of the amateur. It means the amateur researchers are somewhere to go to without having to go through the uh, establishment groups of the universities, the pictures of funding. That, that will, we do that for you. We, at the moment, are the process of becoming a charity. And by God, we've not got that all important charity, charity, charity number, everything's going to happen. People say, oh, we've got that, we've got that, of course I'm interested in making money, because by God, I've got so much I want to spend it on. And the important thing in an organisation like BCIB or like the CSA is that it does, I believe, that in the public eyes, it legitimises the research of individuals. No researchers. It may be another uh, future year's conference ought to have one of the days, it's a weekend, and one of the days with the with several former ecologists, you know, from British Ecological Society, Natural yeah. England, and that camp, yeah. and in here talking with us, listening more to us than us to them, but to try and get that collaboration out there. I, I, yeah. I think they'll find it uncomfortable, but I think we should we should try it certainly. Well, one other quick I'll bit of feedback on what you discussed in your pairs about your, what you want to happen in the next five years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Since I did the last one, I'll It's not just an accepting the pair of the contractors, but accepting the spine of the media and other predators because um, you think that you have started coming in out to um, now, the conversation here, you know, following up, what can we talk to them? And with my case as well, if I can find them, we talk to them. And I think it's, you know, they're looking for a story, they're not, not so open for what they're out there. It's just being yeah. it. Yes. Certainly in Gloucestershire, um, it may be because they get so much exposure to them idiots like me and Frank Tunbridge and Danny Nyman are the Gloucestershire media, the BBC and the local radio stations and the newspapers are going to be accepting this. We do not have to go in trying to prove our case. They just, they, they, you know, maybe five years ago we did, but they just call us in regularly for more comments on what's going on. It's like well, that, that's that's good. Good. Yeah. 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 And they see it as good news and interesting stuff and good headlines and things, so, uh, so we've really overcome that. But of course, if there was a nasty incident, then that would, you know, that's another issue.